Hello, BookTube. This is Peg. I am back at the history shelf. Um, got some updates for you. Got some updates on what I've read recently. Um, I wanted to show some new books that arrived. Um, a few from publishers, a couple from uh, just orders that I, order that I placed um, recently. But let's, let's begin with a couple of books I recently finished. And... Um, one fiction, one history, and I will be writing a book review on one of these, but the first one I finished and loved it was is Poland, 1939, The Outbreak of World War II uh, by Roger Morehouse. This was put out by Basic Books. Um, got my little note card in here. Um, it's about a 320-page read. Uh, it, it went pretty quickly, though. Um, I think this is a very important contribution to World War II studies in that most people, as Morehouse, you know, states in the book, spend maybe a, a page talking about the invasion of Poland um, when they were so much more involved and in how hard uh, the Polish people fought, the military, uh, they were very proud, they had a very uh, strong martial tradition, and uh, just, he, he blows away some of the um, misconceptions. Um, in the myths that survived the war, unfortunately, like the Polish cavalry charged armored tanks and stuff like that, just to denigrate them, and that it was that never that was never the case. And um, anyway, I am writing a book review for this for Open Letters Review, and I'm going to do a a video review of this book once I write that review, so I can just com you know get all my notes together. But this was a fabulous, fabulous book really enjoyed it. Um, and then I finally finished a mystery <laughs> that I had started, it seems like months and months ago, maybe even last year. I don't even know. But I finally finished White Knights, a thriller by Anne Cleves. This is the second in her Shetland series. Um, you know, it's interesting. I have always, uh, I've always said that the BBC series, I didn't want to give it a shot because I didn't like the fact that they changed the ethnicity of the person playing the detective, but uh, I think it was I think it was Lawrence, um, my friend Lawrence on Twitter, who said, "You know what? I know that they changed that, but you should try watching again because they really de did develop the character." Um, so, the detective's name is Jimmy Perez, and um, so I might give it another shot. And especially since now I've read two books in the series, I, I might watch two of those shows to see um, if they do a good job with the actual building up the mystery and then the reveal itself. Um, this one I gave about three stars out of five. And I think, because this was the follow-up, like the sophomore follow-up, you know, like uh, Raven Black was fantastic. So um, I think she was just starting to hit her stride. And so I'm, I'm thinking of reading the next one in the series, which is Red Bones. So let me know if you've read uh, this one or Red Bones, and let me know if you think it's it's a, it's a worthwhile series to continue. Um, I might check out the BBC series again and try to get past my my issues with it. But um, I finished this one. Um, I'm in the middle of another book, and they're they're across the room, so I can't show them. But I'm in the middle of The American Mind by Henry Steele Commager, which is a study of uh, American intellectual development, thought in the realms of literature, law, religion, um, economics, just every, and it was written back in the 50s, so it's definitely a time trip. Um, people don't say things <laughs> like that anymore. Whoops, what happened here? Ah, okay guys, sorry. <laughs> I thought my camera turned off again. This happened earlier. No, all right, we're good. Anyway, and then I am two chapters away from finishing 1491, The Americas Before Columbus, um, and I think that's the subtitle, by Charles Mann. Um, doing a buddy read with Patrice Jones and Lukash at Totally Pretentious. We've been really enjoying it. Two chapters away from finishing. But my, my docket's are already full. Um, <laughs> I'm reading several different things. Uh, I'm reading Breakaway Americas. Uh, which was the book, um, the um, 
the book review poll uh, that I put out, uh, the majority of you voted for a book review on the Breakaway Americas, the Unmanifest Destinies of the Jacksonian America. So I've started that. And so that'll be coming soon, hopefully in the next week, week and a half. I really need to make some headway in that. Um, I'll also be reviewing the two other books in that book review poll. Um, just because they were tied and I'm just interested as heck in both of these. So I've, I've really <laughs> given myself a lot of work, but it's fun work. But I'll be reading and reviewing these as well. Whaling Captains of Color, America's First Meritocracy by Skip Finley, and Death at the Edges of Empire, Fallen Soldiers, Cultural Memory, and the Making of an American Nation, 1863 to 1921 by Shannon Bontrager. So those are coming up. Um, and then I wanted to show you this book recently that I got. Uh, I was kind of on a, uh, getting a lot of different books from like Hamilton book and the other bargain book places. Um, just kind of wanting to study more about, oh, the evolution of, uh, the beginnings of an evolution of uh, racist thought in America. And I, I think I showed you that last book, Stamp from the Beginning by uh, Ibram X. Kendi. Um, that's pretty popular right now. And um, someone else, another booktuber had a, uh, oh no, no, it was someone on Facebook. They had a picture of their bookshelf showing all the books that she has on like uh, slavery, racism, and stuff like that. And I saw this one and uh, just the spine of it. And I was like, let me check it out. And I was able to find a used copy in brilliant condition. Um, and this is The Slave's Cause, A History of Abolition by Manisha Sina. Um, it's a big chunkster of a book from Yale University Press. Um, I've always been interested in the abolitionists, um, uh, just of all races who came together to work together um, to abolish slavery. And... Uh, this is a pretty in-depth in-depth study. We've got uh, it's about 600 pages. Um, yeah, it's hugely blurbed um, by uh, a lot of esteemed historians. Um, so basically, this book is a comprehensive. Let me read this comprehensive new history of the abolition movement in a transnational context. Um, Manisha Sinha illustrates how the abolitionist vision ultimately linked the slaves' cause to the struggle to redefine American democracy and human rights across the globe. I like that. I like that approach. That's refreshing. So, yeah, pick this up used, and uh, it's just, it's, it might as well be, it just looks brand new. It's fabulous. All right, what else? Oh, yes. Okay, so these came from Zondervan Publishing, and I, I posted on my Instagram uh, account for it, and if you want to follow me on Instagram, all my information is down below in the show comments. Um, they sent me... They, I, they must have seen my other N.T. Wright video um, and some of the other books uh, by Zondervan that I'm reading and will be sharing my thoughts on, and books I've shared on this channel, um, but I'm a huge N.T. Wright fan. And he's a theologian, in case you don't know, Christian theologian. Very approachable. Um, he's just a very a learned man who is not intimidating at all. Um, he's just a joy to listen to and to learn from. Well, they have done a three-volume collection of uh, collected essays of N.T. Wright. Essays, uh, and then, so I have three, three uh, volumes in the first one. I don't think they go in any particular order. We have Interpreting Jesus, Essays on the Gospels. Beautiful book. And then we have Interpreting Paul. This is the skinniest version here. Essays on the Apostles and His Letters. It's much thinner. And then uh, Interpreting Scripture. Essays on the uh, Bible and Hermeneutics. It's about the same size as the interpreting Jesus. Um, so I'll just give you a brief overview because I, I think I'm going to start with interpreting Jesus because I love the Gospels. They're beautiful, they're instructive, and uh, you know if you're a Christian like I am and um, 
I just, I just, I love Jesus. <laughs> He's just amazing. And uh, the Gospels are just beautiful. And I, I'd like to, I'd like to read N.T. Wright's essays on, on the Gospels. I think that'll be a really enjoyable read. Um, so, so the essence of these three volumes, like why they put these together, I mean, I have a little press sheet here. Um, this is interesting. Okay, the collected essays of N.T. Wright brings together uh, his most important articles on scripture and hermeneutics, um, Jesus and the Gospels, and Paul and his letters over the last three decades. Uh, many have never been published or are only available in hard to find larger volumes and journals. That is fantastic. Because N.T. Wright has a huge uh, library of um, works, and I own many of them. Um, but again, like they said here, and hard, harder to find larger volumes. Uh, I have a, a set um, that's upstairs with my other commentaries. I have a whole bookshelf that is just dedicated to ancient Christian commentary, Re Reformation commentary. <sighs> doctrine. Um, I should take a picture at least and put it up so you guys can see. <laughs> I should I should do a tour of that, but it, it, it's just one huge Ikea shelf like this, uh, floor to ceiling, which is my um, my spiritual and Christian commentary and, and um, you know, Bibles and things like that. But um, he's got a, a massive set of just uh, studies he's, he's done they're harder to read for sure. They are definitely far more academic. Um, I think these will be more approachable um, for a general public and uh, and sometimes I, I just I want to be able to, to get to the heart of the message quickly without having to really put on my thinking cap and <laughs> and 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 only make it through a couple of pages when he does his really heavy um, uh, you know exploration of the text. Um, but so this is a, a really good way. I, I really like what they're doing with this. Um, but it's also for serious students. Um, this you know, so the collection has these three volumes. Um, and each essay, um, each essay are, you know, they're detailed, incisive, and uh, nuanced exegesis. Um, I love it. All essays are, are preceded by brief, brief reflections written by N.T. Wright, um, serving to contextualize the writing uh, and to highlight their place and significance within Wright's voluminous opus. And he does, or cor corpus, not opus. <laughs> opus corpus. Um, so this is a beautiful set. Thank you, Zondervan. Um, I'm going to start with Jesus as I hit myself in the head with the books. And uh, I'll report back. Uh, hopefully, uh, some of you will be interested to hear. I know uh, several of you enjoy N.T. Wright. doesn't matter if you're Christian or not. In fact, I know a couple of you are not uh, at all. And uh, you appreciate the man's writing. It's clear. It's lucid. And it's often charming. Um, so that's what I appreciate about him. And I, uh, I take courses online that he, he gives through UD. Udemy, it's U-D-E-M-Y. Um, I pay for them, but um, I'll always have them. And they're uh, videos of him teaching. We've got, um, you know, studies of scripture, different books of the Bible, and uh, interspersed with um, quizzes. And uh, it's a nice little interactive course. And you're, you're able to, um, you know, ask questions. And uh, one of the moderators does get back to you. So, um, Again, just to say that I am a huge N.T. Wright um, reader, follower, and student. I, I find his, his approach to um, Christianity uh, is impeccable. So, yes, very happy to have received these. All right. Okay, oh, here's another used book that I picked up. This was definitely, uh, I'm not sure, how did I find this again? <laughs> Sometimes when I'm browsing, oh, I don't know where I got this. Oh, duh, it's Naval Institute Press, okay. But it didn't come in my last shipment of Naval Institute Press books. I think I, 
I think I found this somewhere else. But this is Exploiting Africa, the influence of Maoist China in Algeria, Ghana, and Tanzania by Donovan C. Chow. Um, I had not heard of this. I didn't know China was, uh, you know, getting their, getting their fingers involved over there. Um, now, it looks at it from a historical uh, account, but um, I'm wondering if it takes it up to present day. I, I bought it on a whim. It was an impulse buy, but I'm going to read it because uh, I'm fascinated. And it's only 150 pages. Um, let's see. Exploiting Africa examines China's historical role in Algeria, Ghana, and Tanzania from the 50s to the 70s. 1950s to 1970s, um, an important yet overlooked aspect of the broader subject of China in, in Africa today. During this time, China meddled in Africa's affairs with its own self-interest in mind and for the benefit of the Communist Party of China. The Chinese arrived in Africa with little fanfare, yet they maintained an active presence that was more pragmatic than revolutionary. Uh, interesting. This book contributes vitally to the discourse on Sino-African history and adds to the contemporary strategic understanding and debate about China in Africa. So I picked that up. Again, a small, uh, skinny volume there. Um, and then I had requested this, and this is from the great folks at University of North Carolina Press. Um, love their Civil War selection, their uh, collection of books, I should say. This is brand new. This is brand new. Um, I saw one, another one of uh, my friends on Twitter is reading this right now, and he loves it. And uh, this came out, yep, this year. And this is Repu A Republic in the Ranks, Loyalty and Dissent in the Army of the Potomac by Zachary A. Fry. I love the, well, as Steve calls them, keyholes, but uh, this is definitely a keyhole history. It really just uh, zooms in on one little aspect of a large event, and uh, I'm, this is interesting as heck. So the politics involved with the, um, within the Army of the Potomac, which it, it, people don't write about that a lot. I mean, they do tangentially when uh, you're reading about Oh, biographies, you know, like McClellan or um, Sherman, um, you know, what were their politics, who were they backing for president, that kind of stuff. But this book talks about how the Army of the Potomac was a political hotbed during the Civil War. Um, does talk about George B. McClellan because, you know, he, uh, uh, he ran for president in 1864 against against Lincoln. It says here that as, as a source of dissent widely understood as a frustration for Abraham Lincoln, um, its one-time commander, George B. McClellan, so even secured the Democratic nomination for president. Uh, but in this comprehensive reassessment of the Army's politics, Zachary A. Fry argues that the war was an intense political education for its common soldiers. He examined several key crisis points to show how enlisted men developed political awareness that went beyond personal loyalties. Uh, by studying the struggle between Republican, Republicans and Demo Democrats for political allegiance among the Army's rank and file, Fry reveals how captains, majors, and colonels spurred a pro-Republican political awakening among the, enlist among the enlisted men, uh, and then culminating in the Army's resounding Republican um, voice in state and national elections in 1864. Fascinating, guys. I'm, it's been blurbed by Gary Gallagher. Um, it's good stuff. Brian Matthew Jordan. So a brand new book by the University of North Carolina Press. Um, looking forward to reading this. Let me know what you guys think. All right, well, those are some new arrivals. Those are some of the books um, that I've finished reading. Um, <laughs> I've got two more that I have another, um, I have two more that I've been um, tapped to uh, to write a review for, uh, Historical Novel Society. And one of them, I'll, sh I'll just show you. I don't, you know, I've got to start reading. These are gonna be due in September. 
But this one looked rather interesting. This is The Blind Light, a novel by Stuart Evers. Um, and it has to do with um, two young soldiers uh, uh, working on the... Uh, well, let me just read this here. The year is 1959. Two young soldiers, one working class, the other privileged, form an intense and unlikely friendship at Doom Town, a training center that simulates the aftermath of an atomic strike. Years later, the men watch in horror as the events of the Cuban Missile Crisis unfold. Carter, now a high-ranking British government official, offers Drummond a way to save himself and his family in the event of a nuclear strike. Their pact, kept secret, will have devastating consequences for the very lives they seek to protect. So it spans multiple decades. Um, it's a portrait of friendship and rivalry that explores class divisions and the psychological legacy of the nuclear age. So this is called The Blind Light. This is, this is uh, going to be out by Norton, W.W. W. Norton in October of 2020. So I have an advanced copy on that. Looking forward to, to digging into a new historical novel. Um, the last two that I read were The Eighth Life and um, Sachuko um, by uh, Chusaku Endo. Endo. And uh, I plan on doing a, a little video review of those two as well. Um, and then this is a first impressions book that I'm doing for Book Browse Review. And this is The Smallest Lights in the Universe, a memoir by Sarah Seeger. So this is kind of different for me. Uh, it's not really history related. But I don't know. I kind of wanted to branch out a little bit. This is about a physicist, I believe, here. Or, uh, yeah, she's, um, Sarah Seeger, or an astronomer. Sarah Seeger has always been in love with the stars. Um, Oh, a planetary. She's a planetary scientist, and she searches for exoplanets. Um, that's that's fascinating. Then something happens. It's um, she loses someone, and I don't want to give it too much away. But um, it's a it's, it's a memoir that kind of takes her through her her uh, her career, and then dealing with loss, and then just you know tying it all in, I guess, to the to the universe and the stars. So I'm excited to check this one out. I need to start this one actually tonight. <laughs> um, and then I have another book, but I haven't opened it up yet. Um, but I will show you next time. Anyway, so we've got a 22 minute video. Um, a little bit of this and that a little mix and match a little mishmash. All right. Well, guys, I'm going to head off for tonight. I hope you guys have a great uh, evening. Take care, be well, and I hope to see you again back here at the history shelf. See ya.